tell us a little bit about your story because you've had an unusual journey. So I think that we need to make sure everybody knows um, exactly, you know, where you come from and the path, your interesting yeah. path that you've taken. Yeah, I probably have one of the most unusual life stories uh, out there. So I came at 16 to the U.S. I was the first Ukrainian Soviet at that time exchange student. I was um, awarded like a really rare all academic scholarship because I spoke English really well in other languages. So I came to Florida and I was supposed to be here just one year. And of course, I immediately fell in love with the U.S., and I uh, said, well, you know what? I'm not going back. So I decided I'm going to get married. So I got married at 17 to my immigration attorney. And I moved to Philadelphia. <laughs> so That's one way to kill like two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I try, I, I would go out on dates with guys my age and I was about, I was 17 and I would tell him, guess what? We can't waste any time. I need to get married. My visa is expiring. So you know how... How, how well that works with <laughs> year old guys. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so then I'd um, submitted my student uh, papers to, to uh, this lawyer in Philadelphia. Somebody recommended, and he said, uh, well, I can't really extend your visa. It's not extendable, but I can marry you. <laughs> I said, okay. So that was my, my first marriage, uh, and it lasted about six years. And uh, he was a huge Playboy fan. So he had this huge Playboy collection which I was incredibly jealous of because I was a very insecure Soviet girl at that time. I had bad acne and I didn't do my hair. I didn't do anything. So I was very, very jealous of all the centerfolds and uh, we would fight over it. And I'd be like, you know, I hate this collection. And one day he said to me, you know, you look just as good as all these women. I said, no, I don't. He goes, well, how about a bet? I'm just going to this. I, I, at that time I was with Wilhelmina. He got a photographer, take some pictures and send it in. And I totally forgot. So time goes by. Meanwhile, I called his father and complained, like, your son has this Playboy penthouse collection. He's a pervert. So his dad, who lived in the Amish community, came, took all the magazines, including the rare Marilyn Monroe and all these autographs and burned them all. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I never have to, I never have to watch him look at these women that I'm, they're just so unachievable. And so lo and behold, I get a Playboy uh, call and they're like, um, um, you know, we'd like to fly you out for a test. And I completely forgot. So I flew out and they signed me up on the spot. And he said to me, see, I told you so. I said, well, now the only issue you can look at is mine. So that was that. So I was became a playmate. I was the first Soviet playmate. And in my layout, there was a picture with Gorbachev shaking my hand. That was like a big deal at that time. <laughs> so, well, how did you meet Gorbachev? So I met him at the World's Affairs Council, but because I was the first uh, first Soviet student to study in the United States, I was kind of a big deal. So I was a celebrity, and I was supposed to go back and help with perestroika and glasnost, and instead I got married because I wanted to be an all-American girl. So anyway, so then I um, post a Playboy. At that time, I was in law school because I, I figured I would have a practice. Um, like uh, my husband at the time together, we, um, so I got my, uh, I was a bit of a genius. <laughs> so I got my um, bachelor's degree at 18 and at 18, I was already studying in law school. So at the time that I posed for Playboy, I was a first year law student. Wow. Then later on, I decided I didn't want to be a lawyer. And the reason I decided that is because I didn't know that my first husband was actually a mob attorney. He was actually, he represented John Stanfa, who was uh, John Gotti's right-hand man in Philadelphia. So at one point, I just pick up the paper. I, th I think I'm like third year in law school, and it's all over the Philadelphia Inquirer, like John Stanfa arrested for ordering all these murders. So my first husband gets disbarred as part of this big bust on um, the mob. And so he goes from making a shitload of money to almost nothing. And at that point, our marriage <laughs> pretty much falls apart um, as he gets into gambling and everything else. So that was kind of the beginning of my life. I had no idea for a long time who he was. We would have dinner with this nice Italian people. <laughs> I had no clue who they were for the longest time. When I picked up Philadelphia Inquirer and it says, you know, his wife and his mistress are going to testify, whatever, are going to be 
cult. Well, his wife couldn't spousal privilege, but anyway, so yeah, so it was, uh, that was my first marriage. And then, um, uh, I opened the site, very popular site, Planet Victoria, and I had that for a long time. And that's when I shot all these magazines. Uh, and at that time, Playboy ended up suing uh, Terry uh, Terry Wells, who had a successful site, because they didn't want Playmates to use the word Playboy Playmate in the mad attacks. And mm-hmm. that case went to Supreme Court. And of course, the Supreme Court said, well, no. It's like NFL player or Miss Universe. Um, these women earn the titles. They're theirs to keep. They can use them in med attacks. So, um, but because of all of that, I had a falling out with Playboy and I ended up posing for Penthouse. So I became pet of the month, 2002, June, 2002. And then later on, 2004, pet of the year. So, wow. Yeah, didn't I was. Have, yeah, didn't Heffler was, like personally admonish you for going over to penthouse. Yeah, I actually have a letter. I think I'm the only one. I have a letter that personally from Hefner in the States, uh, you were one of our best and brightest and we're so sorry to let you go. But I said, look, you decided to sue playmates and this is how we make our living. And it's not fair. We can't use the very title you gave to us in our meta tags. That was the only way people could find websites early on. Right, right. Falling out. And um, they were very restrictive as to what we could do. And I was already posing for like Leg Show and all these different other magazines. So I um, ended up switching to Penthouse. And um, so I had a really long, illustrious career starting from, I think I was a Playmate at 18. And then I was Pet of the Year at 30. And I kept modeling. So I, I think I probably, at one point, I was the most published nude model of all time. <laughs> like I would walk in. And all the magazines, everything from like gallery to club to hustler, everything you name it, you know, penthouse letters would all be my covers because I was such a workaholic. I would just shoot endlessly. You know, I would come out, shoot with you guys, everyone, basically, Steve Hicks, you know, all the top photographers. I don't think there's anybody I didn't shoot with. And I would shoot nonstop, too. I'm just I have a ton of energy. So I work and work and work. 